Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, welcome. If you are a returning subscriber, welcome back. I missed you. Today, I am going to be doing my makeup and I have a story time for you guys. I feel like I don't really do story times and I'm pretty private about my about my personal life, personal problems, at this say. But today I was like, you know what? I'm gonna do a story time about something that has happened to me. And this is a spooky story, bitch. This is scary, pero de la vida real. <laughs> like for real, dude. I feel like I owe this for my true supporters so you guys can get to know me on a more personal level. And meanwhile, I talk to you guys. I'm going to be doing my makeup, of course. Y esta historia es algo que it honestly made me stronger and I've been wanting to talk about this story but I was, I don't know, I kept overthinking about talking about it because first of all, I'm not really too open about stuff about my past, past relationships, etc. I was the type of girl that would be like, why am I gonna give them more attention? But then I'm like, I already went through this, so might as well make, might as well make money out of the trauma, bitch. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? And it's like, why not? Like if I want people to know me, like, on a deeper level, I'm gonna talk about it. And all my close friends know about this. All my close friends, like they freaking hated this guy. <laughs> Pero yo seguía ahí de pendeja. So I'm gonna be talking to you guys about my first official boyfriend ever. So this is gonna be some real life chisme. And guys, I also wanted to talk about this because when I started blowing up on social media, I would do videos giving relationship advice to girls. I've seen that a lot of people think I did those videos for fun. Like to laugh at other girls going through some toxic shit. He mirado comentarios that they're like, oh, she says that because she has always been in this perfect relationship with Adan. They're like, yeah, you say that because you've never had another boyfriend. Your only boyfriend was Adan. It's just crazy how people assume these things. Because I mainly started doing those videos. Because at that time, when I felt like shit, I wish I had a person like me. Like dead ass. A veces se necesita someone to be a little aggressive with you and be like, bitch, snap out of it. Like, stop being a pendeja. What are you doing? Why are you letting yourself get treated like this? Like, seriously, stop that. <laughs> Literally, I've had close friends be like, why do people think that about you on social media? Like, why do people assume you're like a mean girl and shit like that? I'm like, dude, I don't know. Maybe because my videos, they would come off in an aggressive way. And I was like the first girl ever to start doing videos giving advice. So it was like such a shocker to everyone. Nowadays, there's like a thousand girls who do videos giving advice. Like Yeri, Itati, I fucking love their videos. Chef's kiss. But back in the day, no había nadie. So I think what I said came off very aggressive and like mean, I guess. Pero sabes que, ni modo. La gente que me conoce, me conoce. I know the real ass bitches that watch me, you guys get me, and I fucking love you guys. And by the way, a lot of things that I'm gonna share, it's things that a lot of people, um, they don't know still. My close, there was a few close friends that knew pretty much everything, but I was still pretty low-key about it because of how toxic it was. So I had a best friend in middle school, and I would go out with his best friend. It was like basically what I always mention when I say that I homie hopped. <laughs> well, I'm talking about those two guys. I had my first boyfriend, which to be honest, I don't consider him like as a official boyfriend because it was no mas like the type of relationship where you're like, oh my God, we held hands and shit like that, you know? It was nothing too serious. And my first boyfriend he had a best friend and that best friend is the one that ended up being my first serious relationship and this happened after he moved by the way you know what i'm gonna give them names 
So my first boyfriend ever, the one that it was like nothing too serious, I'm gonna name him Julio. And I'm gonna name the best friend guy Joseph, which was the one that I got into a serious relationship with. So Julio was my first boyfriend in sixth grade. Y ya después he moved away and that's when I started talking to Joseph. We used to hang out like with a group of people. Siempre nos juntábamos mucho. Yo, ellos dos y como... Dos otras muchachas. By the way, the foundation I'm using is in the shade Neutral by Frankie Rose. Use my discount code Erica. We would hang out a lot. There was times where me and Julio weren't going out, but it was chill. Porque era todo como bien inocente, pues. Y hasta que llegó 8th grade and Joseph, I think he had hit me up. or I don't know how, but we started talking again. We had drifted away because Joseph was one year older than me. So when I was in 8th grade, he was already in high school. Julio had moved away with his dad and me and Joseph started talking. But like it happened naturally. To be honest, I would never, I would have never thought that me and him were gonna go out and get like really close. At first, everything was going really good. He was really sweet and he would always be like, I can't believe we're going out. I always liked you. You were my crush, like, since we were kids. And all this nice shit, I was like, oh, he's so sweet, you know? Y también me dijo that he always liked me, even when we would hang out with Julio. So he was, like, the friend that was friend-zoned. I remember there was a time where they had, like, dared us to kiss, like, a peck. And I was like, ew. And I remember I went to go wash my mouth like my lips with hand sanitizer. <laughs> I know that's so fucked up, but it's because he was so friend zoned. I was like, no, it's because I just don't see him like that. Like that's so fucking weird. Este morrito me fue ganando. And that whole hand sanitizer story is something that he would bring up like so much, dude. And I was like, dude, well, I didn't know that we were gonna end up together. Like, but dude, okay, so at first everything was going good and then pasó el tiempo, pasaron como, yo creo como un mes o dos and he started being very controlling. Like, it was bad, dude. He made me delete my MySpace. He made me delete so many contacts. He would go through my text messages. If I wouldn't text him, as soon as I would wake up, he would get so pissed. There was times where I would text him when I was on my way to school because he would go to a different school, like a continuation type of school <coughs> because he was behind credits. Sorry, I hit the blunt too hard. I'm just kidding. <laughs> but dude, if I would text him like, hey, I'm walking to school, he would be like, why didn't you text me when you wake up? And then he started telling me, you don't need to wear makeup. If you come over today, don't wear makeup. And he always wanted me to go see him. Así de que él me fuera a ver, no quería, dude. Like, he just wanted me to go over and basically just do stuff with me. Looking at it now, I feel like he would definitely use me. Like, it sounds really fucked up, but... He would just sexualize me a lot now that I look back. And then I was about to graduate from 8th grade. It was my promotion. I remember he went and everything was everything was chill. E after that, there was a dance, which was the 8th grade dance. And he would kind of gaslight me. He would be like, oh, you want to go to the dance? Like, it's fine if you want to go, like, knowing I was going to feel bad. He was like, oh, I was thinking we can hang out, but, like, if you want to go to the dance, that's fine. Like, era chingaquedito, you know? He would act like, como que me daba mi freedom, según. Pero si si me iba a otro lugar, me la hacía de pedo. So I ended up going to his house after promotion, which is something that I honestly, I low-key regret because... Dude, I could have been dancing with my friends. My friends from middle school, like, they're always going to have a special place in my heart. And the fact that I picked some fucking dick over my friends, it just, it sucks, dude. Like, I never wanted to be that girl again after this relationship was over because... 
I just, I felt so shitty and I felt so used. I went to his house and I was like 13 around this time or 14. I don't really remember, but dude, I was a baby. He was only one year older than me, but still like, I honestly felt very pressured to do some things and if I didn't want to do them, he would be like, oh, is it because you don't love me? He was like, well, we're going to be together forever, so might as well do you know what together and other things. And yo de pendeja, I eventually gave in and I was like, yeah. And I hate that I gave in, which is why I've done videos probably telling girls like, don't be a fucking pendeja like I was because I mean it like how I was. After that, I went to ninth grade and I would just do anything to make this guy happy because I thought I was so in love with him. I think since I was so nice, este güey agarró la maña de me just going over to see him. Yes, I was that girl que iba de Buscona to go look for him because if not, we wouldn't hang out. So it's crazy to say, but I was that chamaca descuidada that would bust up con permiso and go to her boyfriend's room. <laughs> like, bro, that's so fucking embarrassing. Like, I would just be in his room, like, 24-7. Honestly, his mom was so sweet, dude sweetest lady ever like same with his family dope ass people always made me feel welcome they even started telling me like towards the end like you should leave his ass like he doesn't deserve you and then he started making fun of my looks and my body so it was like little by little el respeto se estaba perdiendo he would be like oh you're flat you have no titties you have no ass you have Como me decía? You have... Oh, you have beaver teeth. He would be like, you have beaver teeth. Why are your eyes so big? You have chicken skin. Like, he would say all these things that I was like, how do you even think about this? Like, to a point where it would start making me laugh. Y como que le daba más coraje. Because I was just like, dude, like, you're weird. Like, why are you saying these things? He obviously wanted to put my self-esteem down now that I think about it, but he would always be pointing out things about me. And then he started telling me, you have a pussy? Like, dude, like, bro, I was a fucking little girl now that I look back. Like, no mames. He was like, yeah, because you're a fucking hoe. Like, he would always tell me I was a hoe and that I was talking to other guys. I would never talk to other guys. He also knew I did videos for fun because around this time I would record videos and upload them to YouTube. I would just get like 10 views, 20 views. I didn't give a fuck. You guys know I've been passionate about what I do. So since that time, since I was like fucking 15, it was when, yeah, cause I got my laptop for my 15. I started posting videos on YouTube. He was like, you're not funny. You're annoying, you're immature. And it's crazy because look at where I am now. So let me just say that this relationship was toxic as fuck. Anything that you can think of, this guy did it. Like, it was bad. So the disrespect thing, it was getting out of hand. He would call me bitch, hoe, all the names in the book. Y yo de pendeja seguía ahí. And I would be like, why are you being like this with me? I was so fucking nice. To be honest, I was genuinely confused. I was like, how did this guy switch on me like that? I'm gonna go in with my lashes. These are in the style Me Creo. Look at how cute our boxes are. If you haven't gotten your hands on my lashes, what are you doing? So like I was saying, the disrespecting was just getting worse and worse. And you know what they say, once respect is lost in a relationship, it never gets better. And I'm here to tell you that that is true. Luckily, since he would go to the other school and I would go to Bell Gardens High School around this time, pues no hicimos un pinche show because that would have been so embarrassing if my friends would have seen the way that I was letting myself be treated. Like, it was disgusting. I was basically that friend that would be all quiet texting her fucking boyfriend. 
I would send this guy paragraphs begging him to stop being such a fucking asshole to me. And like I said, yeah, I would tell my friends, but they didn't know everything. Like, I wasn't going to be like, oh, I'm begging him, you know? Like, that's fucking embarrassing. But there was many times where I couldn't handle it and I would just burst out crying in class because of the mean ass shit that he would text me. También, since he didn't go to my high school, he would always want to go pick me up. And if he would see that I would say hi to another guy that was literally just a classmate, hacia un pinche berrinche, dude. He was like, why are you so excited? Why do you have to hug them? Like, dude, chill. Like in high school, everyone would give each other like a little side hug. Like, no mames. And then I started hearing that he was being volado with some girls that were friends of my friends. And I know he was because, you know, like when guys talk about girls and they're like, oh, they're ugly and shit like that. Well... He would do that and then eventually i heard that one of my friends well i thought she was my friend was flirting with him and that he would flirt back this guy had a sister by the way which i absolutely respect her and i think she's an amazing person dude she's a real ass girl like she always had my back i fucking I'm always gonna have love for her. I probably sound like a clown saying this because I know that some cuñadas are full of shit. But she was actually a really cool girl. She was a girl's girl. I used to do flips with her like at the fucking monkey bar shits in the playground in elementary school. So me and her were really close. Pero ella tenía amigas y esas amigas tenían amigas. And you get it. And dude, when I found out that one of my friends was flirting with him behind my back, I got so heartbroken. More at the fact that she would do that. Because I thought she was a cool, funny girl. Like, siempre me seguía la corriente. Pero como va a estar con esas pendejadas? After I found that out, it was after school. And I remember she said hi to me. And I just fucking ignored her. Like, I just looked at her and I rolled my eyes. And to be honest, que yo haga algo así, it takes so much of me. But I was literally like, dude, fuck this bitch. Like, that's so fucked up. Obviously, I got more mad at fucking Joseph. But it just hurt that a friend would do that. Así que estaba de voladito y también una vez me dijo, he was like, oh, some girl in school motorboated me. <laughs> Now that I look back, I'm like, bruh, like that should have been an instant, like, fuck you. Ahora me da risa and whatever, but I was like, what the fuck? Like, there's bitches in high school motorboating him. And dude, this guy, he had pegue. But I had pegue too. I was a pretty cute girl. So I started like hearing all this shit, all these red flags. Y que es lo que hice? I started playing my cards too, which is something that I regret, porque yo siempre digo esto, if you want revenge on your ex-boyfriend, no vayas a dar las nalgas por ardida. And not even dar las nalgas, but give dudes your time as a revenge, because that's low-key what I did, and I mainly did it because I knew he was gonna hurt me, so I wanted to do something so I won't feel as bad when it happens. You know what I mean? And if anything, it did happen already. Like this guy was hurting me already in so many ways. I'm pretty sure there was even more stuff that he did that I didn't hear about. But I ended up flirting with this guy. And I did that when we were broken up. So I was like, Andele, you wanted to break up with me? So I did that when I was single. And fuck no, dude. When he heard about that. He got even worse. I'm going in with my mascara from Makeup Revolution. <gasps> oh my god, I thought I me manche. And then I found out that I might be moving to Paramount. And at first, he was like, oh, you should just move in with me. He wanted me to move into his house when I was like 15. Y ya después me decía, oh, I don't care if you leave. Like, it's gonna be good if we break up. Because he's gonna be able to fuck other bitches. And así me decía, dude. Un chingo de cosas. Sometimes I would be like, dude, a este niño le hace falta que le den una pinche chinga sus papás. Because his mom was so nice. 
But I remember there was a time where like on our way to his soccer game, su papa le rompió una escoba en la cabeza. <laughs> and I remember he told me. And I thought, pues qué buena falta le hace eso porque ya me tenía hasta la madre. A veces pensaba que era como bipolar o algo or... Maybe he was just a narcissist. There was a time also before I moved that I was just walking around the school and he texted me so fucking pissed off saying, why did you look at my friend like that, you dumbass bitch? And I was like, what are you talking about? He's like, yeah, my friend texted me and he told me that you looked at him in a bad way. I was like, ah, chinga. Like, what the fuck is he talking about? But dude, así me hablaba and he was so defensive about his friends. Like, damn, bro, chill. And it's so funny that he was so defensive about his fucking friends because at the end, when we broke up, I swear, like, so many of them in my fucking DMs trying to talk to me. I was like, these dudes are a joke. Y aquí es donde se pone bueno. I know you guys are probably thinking, Erika, when did you realize that this guy ain't shit? And I am so glad I'm telling you guys this story again because, dude, I was a pendeja too. Si se puede. Choose yourself. But I didn't really completely choose myself this time. <laughs> I was still being a little pendejita years after this with the same guy. But... Where I left off is I was in ninth grade. So then I moved to Paramount. And this was when I was going to 10th grade. And I got a boyfriend in like the fucking second week of being a new girl. Obviously, I was getting slut shamed as fuck. Like this girl is new. Ya la semana ya anda puteando. Pero yo la verdad, I did that so so in my head I can get over my ex-boyfriend completely. And as soon as I moved, I stopped answering his texts, his phone calls. He was blowing my shit up. Pero fíjate que los primeros tres días he was like, all right, bitch, you're not going to text me. Fuck you then. I don't even like you. Blah, 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 and all this shit. Like, primero me estaba mandando paragraphs, mandándome a la verga. And then ya que pasó como una semana, he was begging me. He was like, please, let's make this work. I really wanted us to be together in high school. I can go pick you up so you can come back to the old high school. Because you know how he was in a continuation school? Well, he was about to start his junior year in the regular high school. So he was like, I can pick you up. We can be like a cute couple in school and all this shit. And I was like, in la madre, like, fuck no. That was so unhealthy for me. So I ghosted him. I cut him off. And then I found out that so many of my friends were talking to him. Guys, I didn't know. That some bitches really ain't shit. Like, I, I never thought that girls would do that. It wasn't only just one. When he got enrolled in that high school, dude, so many girls that I loved, they would fucking flirt with him. And my really close friends would tell me that. And I was like, dude, that's so fucked up. I would never do that to them. I was like, fuck him. Any bitch can have him. I don't give a fuck. Pero me dolió que ellas sabían that they knew that this guy was such a fucking dick and would treat me like shit. He would literally mentally abuse me. He brainwashed me into thinking that I was so ugly. I felt like a monster. And they knew and they were still flirting with him. Like some of these girls I had opened up to and they, they didn't care. So now I was in a new high school. He was at my old high school. And also all my guy friends that knew he would treat me bad, they were all kissing his ass. He was one of those popular shuffler guys. And my guy friends, they would be eating his shit up everything that he would say about me. And again, I was just like, damn, people really don't care how shitty a person is. If they're popular, they're gonna be kissing ass. And up to this day, I've noticed that 
in a lot of people. Like there's some people that I met and they're very like, first of all, they claim to be different online and they treat people like shit, pero a la gente no le importa. If they have numbers or if someone's just popular, they kiss ass. And then time passed again. This time it was already like the end of sophomore year. I was about to be a junior and he ended up reaching out to me begging me to give him another chance and yep yo de pendeja i ended up going back i know i know and i thought oh well he probably changed you know like le metí una espantada this guy's gonna be different and at first he was being really sweet Ya que pasó como una semana, nombre dude, again. Started acting like a fucking dick again. During that time that we were together, I went through his messages because I wanted to see which ones of my friends he was talking to. And I did see that some of them reached out to him first and that like ugh, that hurt me even more i ended up getting tired of his shit so i freaking left his ass and this time it was more than him just saying words that were really fucked up he he actually he tried to put his hands on me and it was something that was so shocking for me because I was fucking 16 years old. I never expected for things to get that bad. At that point, I was like, no, I need to leave because I need to leave. Like, things are getting really bad. And it was for some stupid ass shit too. I think I was just laughing, playing around. And he was like, if you don't shut the fuck up, I'm going to suck you. And I was like, okay, then do it. At first, I took it as a joke. And he was being dead serious. He basically grabbed me by my hair and like he pushed me into the floor. And he was like trying to kick me. And I was like, yo, like this is fucking scary. And I was like, bro, this, this is fucking, this is too much. And it's so sad because I was losing myself. I've always been known to be the type of girl that's very outgoing confident like i've been in dance since i was a little girl y él me estaba apagando mi luz macizo dude the worst part is that he wasn't even sorry about it it took him some time to realize what he did and i lucky i burned him out dude i was like fuck that so i ended up telling someone in his family and he messaged me and he was like why are you spreading lies about me I never put my hands on you. I was like, okay, so I would just make that up. He was making it seem like if I was lying, I would not lie about something so severe. Porque that's a huge accusation. And honestly, guys, I never talked about this too because I hate when people pity me. Like, please don't feel bad for me. Obviously, this is an old ass story. But I hate when people feel bad for me. So about that, I just told a few people. And then time passed. And yeah, guys. Again, I ended up giving him another chance. I know, I know, I know, I know. And to be honest, I kept giving this guy chances. Because since he was my first official relationship. I felt like no other guy was going to like me, especially because of the stuff that he would tell me. He would be like, oh, no other guy's going to like you because you're a hoe now. And, and he would also make me feel like if I was really ugly, I was basically brainwashed. But this was just for a bit porque recapacité, o sea, obvio. <sighs> thank God, dude, thank God I, I wasn't stuck in that situation, but... So I ended up breaking up with him and when I broke up with him, I felt really bad because his family was going through some stuff that I don't want to say because it was really personal, 
but I basically left him when he needed me the most, I guess. But I was just so over his shit. And then I also had a lot of my guy friends, the ones that ended up meeting him, message me and be like, please give him another chance. He loves you and this and that. After they knew all the shit that he had done for me. Like, that's fucking weird, bro. That's disgusting. But whatever. Estábamos morritos. He was a little better than the other times. I guess he was actually trying. But it was too late because I was so over his shit. And I couldn't get over the fact that he had put his hands on me. And that he had basically destroyed me emotionally. And he destroyed my self-esteem and so many things, dude. Yeah, cuando lo dejé, he was blowing up my phone like crazy. This was junior year, like the middle or the beginning. I don't rem No, I think it was the beginning. Because he really wanted me to go to prom with him. And he was saying that he wanted to marry me. He said that he got a ring for me. Who knows if that's true? But I remember he texted me and he was like, please come outside. I have a ring for you. And I just never went outside because I was that over his shit. Like at that point, I was like, ya déjame en paz. Ya estoy hasta la madre. That's how you know you're over someone's shit. Like I just, I wouldn't even get butterflies when he was being nice anymore. Yes, when he was being nice because he was always such a dick. He would call me like, 200 times in a day and i'm not even exaggerating and leave me so many text messages people that knew him would be like give him another chance he's always crying and all this shit but i was just like he would also tell me that he wanted to die that he was gonna die without me i think he socked a wall in his room yeah dude like very violento vibes i know dude que bueno que dios me alejó de personas así y me encontré a un buen hombre que me respeta y me valora. A month passed, a month or weeks, like two weeks. It was, it happened so fast, but I found out that he had a girlfriend. Like, how are you gonna be begging me and saying all this shit? I mean, I know that everyone heals differently, but I was like, no mames, like, how are you gonna have a girlfriend that fast? And then the last thing that I ever heard about him was once when one of his family members went over to my house. It was my birthday because, dude, I loved his family so much. And they told me, oh, he said happy birthday. And I was just like, thank you. And like, I ya le corté. I was like, I am not falling into that cycle again. I mean, luckily, I didn't experience high school with him. And it was always on and off. Pero no mames. Like, this guy drained me. Y yo me aguitaba mucho. Like, I felt so ugly and worthless. I would believe everything that he would tell me. Like, I literally felt worthless. And even thinking about it now, it makes me a little sad. Because I wish I could go back and hug myself. Like, I didn't deserve none of that bullshit. And it hurts me seeing it from this perspective now that I'm older. Because I'm like, little Erica was always so loud and outgoing. And a dancer, very confident. Hasta que él me apagó mi luz. But eventually, I ended up finding myself again. Thank God. I give myself props that I put a stop to this shit. I was like, I... I do not want to live this kind of life. Like if I end up pregnant y me quedo aquí panzona, like what? This is it for my life? Being in a toxic relationship, being pregnant? Fuck no, I wanted more. Y aparte de eso, he would put me down a lot for making videos. If I was still with him, I wouldn't be where I'm at now. I chose myself and I picked myself and I learned how to love myself from scratch. And doing that just made me feel so powerful. So if you're going through a situation like this, girl, you need to get the fuck out of there. Tu ponte bien perra y salte. You don't need that shit. You really don't. Because you staying there with that person, you're just feeding their ego. They don't like you. They're not going to change. If a man liked you, he would do everything to make you happy. And anything in his power 
to let you be aware of that. He wouldn't even think about hurting you or making you sad, making you cry. Al contrario, a guy that puts you down, that's some little bit shit, like for real. También, now that I look back, I kind of feel like this guy was jealous of me because I was super out there. And I was a cute girl, I'm not gonna lie. So I think que le ardía. But yeah, guys, that is what I went through with my toxic relationship. I can't believe it took me this long to talk about it. But I'm glad I finally did. So you guys can get to know me more and you guys can see where I'm coming from. For example, the advice videos that I did. No, I never did them for fun. Like, oh, I'm gonna film myself of calling girls pendejas just for fun even though i've never been through that stop being a fucking pendeja ha <laughs> oh my god this is so funny because they look stupid as fuck i'ma post it i swear to god that was never me if anything i'm sorry if you got that impression of me my intentions have always been pure and people that know me in person know that so I feel like I literally just dropped a bomb on you guys. Like I got this off my chest. But yeah, I've been in a toxic relationship. I've been slut shamed. I've been burned out. I've been peer pressured. And also I'm not saying that what I went through is the worst things ever. I know that some girls have gone through way worse stuff. But what I went through was valid. Because dude, it was a fucking nightmare. And then the fact that my family never knew about this. I think they still don't know until now. So this video is very, very personal. And yeah, guys, that is it for today's video. I hope you guys liked my makeup. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up down below. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. Turn on your notifications so you can get notified for the next time I post. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye.